All right, welcome back to the Man Cave. I'm your host, Black Irish. I have a video here today, as you can clearly see. It has the man, the myth, the legend, James Earl Jones, one of the greatest actors of all time, passed away over the weekend. He will be surely missed. The reason why I'm making this video is because there has been some people redacting their well wishes to his passing. Usually the same old people that see a video before this and then all of a sudden no longer like him for obvious reasons doesn't have to make sense but it is what it is so i'm going to play the full video which is about three minutes and 50 seconds and then i'm going to show the other people responding to it the usual suspects and then i'm going to give my two cents and then i'm gonna get you guys on out of here right so let's get it started do black men marry white women because of the nature of black women? I know in some of our earlier conversations you mentioned that the black women you've met have been uptight. What do you mean by that? Well, uh, I'll answer the one question, what do I mean by uptight? Going toward a more militant uh, attitude about their own identity. Um, and in, in, in many ways are way ahead of the black man because uh, uh, I don't know why, but uh, uh, in many ways are replacing the black man. There, there, there's a whole, uh, there's an almost an un, unfeminine aspect of the, the, uh, the black militant woman. Do you find that uh, some black women you've known out of your personal experience uh, blame the black man for, for what happened to them in slavery even today? Of course. Uh, you know, if, if, if the black man, regardless of, of the, the causes, failed to protect her, left her in, in, in a position where she had to sell herself or bar, a bargain with, with her body and so on, yes, um, you know, she, she had, there, there's a resentment about that. But, um, it's very complex now, you see. Uh, I, I think in, in, in another generation, you, you get, you, you, you'll get a, a whole crop uptight about their position in society. Uh, there are uh, many, because I'm general, generalizing now, many are overreacting against Aunt Jemima, the Aunt Jemima image, the submissive um, Mother Earth type, uh, unselfish, uh, all giving, especially all giving to the white man, sexually and uh, in the kitchen and every, every other way. And uh, uh, she's also overreacting against the uh, the problem of having to be the breadwinner, uh, the matriarch of the house. The the myth of the black matriarch is a, is really a myth because she is not. It, it wasn't her choice. Uh, many, many black women, I'm sure, once they found this job had a certain uh, so, uh, social and uh, political uh, dignity to it, uh, relished it and wielded the rolling pen, you know, like any minority group mama w would do. Uh, but no matter how much she might relish it, 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 it wasn't her choice to begin with. I want you to listen to them. It really wasn't her choice. What is he talking about? What is he referring to? What is a time period where things started changing, where it wasn't her choice? When men were no longer allowed to be in the houses, when men, women were given money, when jobs were being removed from black communities. The finances weren't coming out. They had to outsource this elsewhere. The government stepped in and said, here's some money. We'll take care of you. Oh, but you can't have men in the house. It was a dangerous time, but it was an experiment that worked very well on how to destabilize a community. He's also referring to something else that I don't think anyone's picking up on. This was in the 1970s. What was another organization that opened up? In the 70s. The reason why I'm bringing that up. Because somebody's going to make a comment. Later down the line in one of the other videos. And I'm going to bring it back up. But we're going to finish this. But just saying. If you know in the comment section. 
you know who it is. Um, she would always have preferred the black male to have run the house, to have saved her from white rapists, uh, white slave owners, you know. Why did you marry Jim? But first, do you know what Jim means by by the uptightness of black women? Oh, yes. You've been in the theater. Well, I've You've... felt it. I've sensed it with almost every black woman that we know, uh, whether they accept me or not. You know, whether there's always a, a tolerance, but there's always hostility uh, behind it. Uh, I can understand it intellectually. Thank God I... I didn't have to go through the, you know, the process that made it occur. I happen to think it's a good thing that they're showing hostility. I think it's the only thing they can show at the moment. And I think out of the hostility, I think that's a healthy sign. Here's another thing that nobody wants to talk about. Why did he choose a white woman, not a black woman? Because he noticed there was a change. He knew, he saw that there was some type of change happening things were changing within the community with their women he understood this this is the part of the conversation that nobody wants to talk about he witnessed that there was something off going on and this wasn't his path even back then they understood that they hate that com that combination of this type of woman and this type of man but how many times have they seen relationships where it's the other way around and it's crickets? Just saying. Let's get to the first video. Um, a good friend tagged me in a video regarding James Earl Jones and his terribly problematic beliefs about black women. He was a younger man, much younger man. I'm going to say this. I do believe that he got his senses back in his very old age. But we need to also understand the nature of where we live and how they were raised. Almost all these niggas. <laughs> I hate to say it like that, but y'all know I'm hood. Like, <laughs> almost all of them, though, have a terrible perception of women generally, but particularly black women. Even and are we ever going to dive into why? No, seriously, let's be let's let's open up Pandora's box. Why is it that when it comes down to talking about how men perceive you, we never answer or ask the simple question, which is, why do they feel that way? You ever gone to a racist person that hates black people and had an actual conversation and asked them, why do you, exactly do you hate me? Nine out of ten, most of them don't even know why they hate you. They just hate you for that reason. You don't even bother asking these men. And men, it's not like these men aren't telling you. They 100% tell you the problems. But you ignore it, or you gaslight them, or you turn it around as if it's not their problem. Oh, slavery, oppression, and, um, and Jim Crow. And you do this so often that they got tired of talking to you about it. Tell me I'm lying. No, they lived off our tip. Miles Davis is one of my favorite jazz musicians and he treated Cicely Tyson and all the other women in his life fucking terribly. And the list goes on. I'm going to give him his flowers, but trust and believe I'm not ignorant. <laughs> Mind you, they all waited until his death before they did this. They did the same thing with Kobe Bryant and the list goes on and on. There's something seriously wrong with a large portion of them who go online and show off their dysfunctional capabilities for the entire world to see. And then you wonder why the world looks at these group of people the way that they do. Black women, I just want you to remember while you're handing out condolences to Mufasa, he did not like us. Mind you, never once said he didn't like you. Not once did he say he didn't like you. This is why I say reading is fundamental. He didn't say that once. He said he noticed there was a shift with these women and the and their men. That's what he said. 
He didn't once say, I can't stand these girls, these women. I can't stand their hair, their black skin, their black lips. I hate black pepper. I hate black keys on the piano. He never said any of those things. They make things up. And then all of a sudden, it's just like, oh, he hates them. Because he, you know why he hates them? Because in your mind, him saying anything negative, even though he's a man from the, that back in the day who was old enough to see it ha happen firsthand, he says something negative. See, what they teach black men to do is simple. Never say anything bad about them. Oh, but still be masculine. You don't get it both ways, honey. That's not how things work. It's ridiculous that we just make up things in our heads and then, poof, yeah, that makes perfect sense to me. Do you know what Jim means by by the uptightness of black women? Black women. Okay, so this is probably going to be a long one, so I'm warning you now. <laughs> black women are unwilling participants in a competition against black men. There was not a competition until men made it so. In the clip you just saw, James Earl Jones was pretty much just saying a whole lot of nothing. But from what I could gather, um, it alluded to black women are too much, white women are just enough. Black women are unwilling competitors. So at this time, we had just been delivered men. There was not a competition until men made it I so. want you to listen to this. In the clip you just saw, James Earl Jones was pretty much just saying a whole lot of nothing. But from what I could gather, um, it alluded to black women are too much, white women are just enough. He never said that. You see how I'm saying? He never once said that. <laughs> you, you, he never once said that once in that interview. This is why I tell you these, mind you, she's a feminist. Who was a feminist who started the feminist group? It wasn't black women. Why are you in a group that hates you? Black women are unwilling competitors. You're During not. This time, we had just been delivered from the atrocities of slavery. And collectively, we were- First of all, slavery ended a long time ago. Segregation, Jim Crow, that's a different story. Slavery happened a long time ago. I'm not just trying to downgrade it. Stop using slavery for you to answer all your questions about how bad you have things in the world. You're making yourself look stupid. We're still dealing with the ramifications of it. And black men were already crafting this narrative against black women. How? Why, Why would they how? do that? To justify what would happen next. And what would happen next, you ask? Access to white women. This breaks my heart, and it will probably break yours too, but the timing of this... The timing of this uh, this narrative being crafted against black women suggests that black women, uh, or, or rather black men, were waiting for a chance to have access to white women. And in justifying this, they needed to villainize black women. Because you can't do something as sinister as preferring your very recent oppressor um, without having some sort of justification for it. Oh, yeah, really? Okay, fine. I'll be a huckleberry. With that said, are you going to talk about one about the elephant in the room? What organization did you join up at the same time that he was talking about this? The militarizing of the of the black female, the oppressors. When what 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 was that organization that your sisters, your aunties, your grandmothers were going through around that time? And who were the people who were the front runners of that organization? It was was it was it the same women that he's going out with that he just had the one one the one woman he's going out with honey black women went to the same organization with the same group of people and turned against the men that group of men who didn't have the ability to oppress you weren't trying to oppress you because you all were dealing with the same thing what are you talking about but see this is why they chose black women they knew that they could be infiltrated, given an idea, told them, we're not going to do it. You should go this way because we're having problems with our men, which means you should be having problems with your men, even though you weren't. So you jumped on the bandwagon, didn't even question it, didn't even think about it. No rhyme or reason towards it. You went above and beyond to support the same group of people who you're saying were your enemies and you're using it as a shame tactic against James Earl Jones for being with one, saying that they were trying to be with them when they were also using you to turn against your own men. Make, make some sense out of that, please, because I can't. I want you to listen to the logic that's coming out of her mouth, or a lack of. 
black men knew um, and even predicted that black women would go on to eventually surpass them. And so they would go on to position themselves in a way um, that would allow them to win. They knew they would need to position themselves in proximity to white women because of course they couldn't position themselves in proximity to white men because they wouldn't have that. White women were a lot easier to convince. White women pushed them to the front of the line. And that was a win for them because they were able to successfully villainize black women um, in, in reality and in the media even. We'll get to the media in a different video. The goal here was to frame black women as undesirable to the masses. And then they had free reign to go after white women who would go on to give them their first place ribbons. Oh, you mean like the color movie Color Purple, which was written by a black lesbian feminist that hated men. Every scene was a black man doing horrific things to black women and they were victims and they've been fighting their whole life and they did nothing wrong and blah, 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 blah. You mean that same media, the same one that was from Oprah Winfrey that helped funded the whole movie, then made a, a new version of the movie and thankfully it bombed because it was stupid. Oh, you're not going to talk about, oh, you're not going to talk about that one. Okay, you, you just want to focus on that. Got it. It was all very strategic. They, they took the traits that had once served them during slavery and they twisted those traits um, in a negative light toward black women. Because what they knew is that white women didn't have those same traits. Why? Because white women didn't need those traits. Black women needed those traits in order to survive slavery. And now that we were so-called past slavery and white women were more accessible, um, black men flipped. What they said was, I can have this now. This thing that was once unavailable to me is now available to me. Serena Williams, Maya Angelou, Alarmed lists of women who were lusting over whitey men who go online, or even more recently, that woman who was taking care of that of the white guy who basically was a deadbeat father. The same generation of women who said, I don't do 50 50 with black men, but I'll go over here and spend all my money taking care of him. The other woman that got married to the other guy from the bachelor, and then he basically divorced her, and now she has to pay alimony. Now she's paying him money. She was f taking care of his entire life. Oh, you mean you mean like that? Oh, no, you don't want to bring that up because you like that. That's what you've been wanting so much and so badly that you go out. Oh, you go above and beyond to actually prove that you have no problem with it. It's only a problem when black men do it. Got it. But because they didn't want to have to deal with the optics of it, desiring their very recent oppressor, what they had to do was make black women out to be the enemy. It is a classic case of cognitive dissonance. Let's go over what cognitive dissonance is. It is an uncomfortable mental state resulting from conflicting cognitions, usually resolved by changing some of the cognitions. So what are the conflicting cognitions here? White women are the enemy, but I want access to them. How to change the cognition? Black women are evil. So I am justified in preferring white women. All I'm saying is history doesn't lie. This was never about modern women like a lot of them would have you to believe. It was more about outdated men. Like I said, she's a feminist speaking like a white woman's feminist from a group that was designed specifically for white feminists so that we have a clear understanding about this. This is the sad nature of most of these women. And you go online. I'm going to I'm going to let go. But I'm, you go online, you go on the TikTok and all these other platforms and you talk the way you do about your men. And then you're shocked that other race of people look down on this race. And then pretend you don't do this. That's the funny part. Like accountability right off, right over your head. You refuse to take the accountability that you do these things. And the sad thing is, is that you have the galls, the galls to sit here and pretend that you don't know what anyone's talking about. This man died and you guys couldn't even wait. You couldn't even really fathom the idea or do the research to figure out what he was talking about. You listen to your grandma say how she was abused every single day of her life without talking to granddaddy to verify what she's talking about is even true or not. But this guy is talking about something and you won't even give him the time of day to find out what he's talking about. This is one of the biggest reasons why there's a disconnect, which is why I say I don't help women because you're going to talk down about me no matter what the race. You're on your own until you learn better. And the rest of the women who actually can understand you need us just as much as we need you are going to be the smart ones who are going to step up, tell them no, because we need them. We're not going to let you drag us down with us. This man passed and you couldn't wait to trash his name.
just like you did Kobe Bryant. You made the same stupid comments about Jonathan Majors. Every anytime a man does something, you have to attack him. But when it's the other way around, you want to give little ticker tape parades and be proud. Oh, I have a mixed baby, and look at this. I finally made it. Pretending that you don't say these things, but that's okay. You can keep on lying to yourselves, but that's why you're the least desired, and that's why men are passport boys and they are out. Because you know what? They're done. 